Hey guys, what's up? Alec back with the daily stock market and look at that. The account is up $3,200 on the day, 5.7%. We also have the markets that are going to be closed this week, December 24th, in observance of Christmas Eve. All right, so keep that in mind. This is a short trading week. We're having a banger of a day, $3,200 up on the day, almost cracking $60,000 again on the account. And I am excited because I think my Robinhood account is going to fly up to around seventy-five to eighty thousand dollars, and we're going to be one step closer to a hundred thousand dollars in my Robinhood account. So if you guys want to come along for the ride, make sure you hit subscribe on YouTube so you can get my full-length videos and all the updates of stocks I'm buying, I'm looking at, and considering my full thoughts about the most popular stocks on the stock market. So just stop what you're doing right now. It only takes one second out of your days to smash that like button, comment below for the YouTube algorithm, and let's get right into today's update. All right, so to top things off, we have PayPal up 3.5% on the day. Remember, we're still in the midst of the dip right now, and this could be a fake out breakout. Um, you know, there's a chance that we can see a Santa Claus rally happen for the last part of December into the first part of January. And we still have PayPal sitting at far, far, far 52 week low. We also have ChargePoint below its support, which was around $19. However, we saw them briefly establish a support in October of around $18 per share. So this could be a good time to buy a ChargePoint, swing it back up to around $24, $25 per share. Alibaba's after that. And Baba is on fire today, up 7%. However, if you pull back out, obviously this one has been battered over the last year, down 51%. Snapchat, all right, we have them up 3.7% on the day, not doing much, but we still see them at a 52 week support. So there's still a lot of time to buy some of these stocks that I'm talking about in this video. Wix, however, is up 10% on the day. So we see a massive, massive movement for, from Wix. However, they're still down tremendously from some of their all-time highs around 55, 60% or more from all-time highs. And if we go back in time, it's basically 2019 at the price they're at now. We also see DraftKings up 8.6%. So we see several different stocks up big you know not just a few stocks up five percent six percent seven almost every stock's up five percent and we see some stocks big up eight or twelve percent or more than that DraftKings is one of those stocks all right however they're still being smoked in the last year they're down 41 percent we've been swing trading this one very frequently this one's a very easy swing trade because if you follow what's going on it dips down and then it rises back up it dips down rises back up you see it dip down here again to 35 and it rose all the way up to 71 and then what did it do it dipped down to 44 and it rose back up to 62. so DraftKings, in my opinion is a great swing trade i'm going to be looking to ride this one up to around 50 dollars per share which would be around what is that around a 50 percent gain on swing trade on DraftKings or more we also see the volume up 14 million on DraftKings. And as DraftKings starts to heat up and football comes and, you know, February is going to come, the Super Bowl and more sporting events, March Madness and everything going on, we're going to see the volume go higher. And in my opinion, I think we'll see DraftKings bounce back to around $50 or above per share. Fiverr is an interesting stock, up 6.69% on the day. Still battered. Again, all these stocks are at 52-week lows right now, so it's a great time um, to be considering buying some of them or even just doing some research and getting yourself familiar with their business model. Fiverr, in my opinion, has a great business model, even if everything shuts down. In my opinion, freelance work is going to go higher and higher and higher. I personally like hiring people for freelance work. It's one of the easiest things, and I think more people are going to start quitting their job and doing more freelance work. And the biggest place, in my opinion, for freelance work is going to be Fiverr. It's pretty much almost a household name at this point. And they only have a $4.4 billion market cap, so they would be an interesting one to do a deep dive in, look at some income statements, their revenue, um, you know, how much they're profiting. And Upwork, which is a public traded company on the stock market, is one of their biggest competitors. Let's actually type them in. 
Upwork, see what they're doing. So Upwork, you can kind of see that they're not moving much. We're down around 12%, blah, blah, blah. But you'll actually see they have the same exact market cap as Fiverr now. And if we look, they're also at a 52 week support. All right, so it could be a good time to buy some of these freelancing stocks. You know, in my opinion, Fiverr should have like a $12 billion market cap and Upwork should probably have like an $8 billion market cap somewhere in those ballparks. But I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see that happen to 2022 or late 2022 or early 2023. So you definitely have to be patient. We're also seeing Enphase Energy bounce back up. This is one that we were buying in the close friends list right at the bottom. So that was a good thing that they bounced up pretty big. XPEV also bounced back up 10%. I wanted to do a video on them yesterday, so I'm kind of sad I didn't get the chance to do that full deep dive before they're starting their bounce back up to around $50 per share. However, keep in mind we have some other um, electric vehicle companies that are at a 52 week low that are probably a little bit more attractive on XPEV. So I'm going to definitely wait on XPEV below 35 and maybe even below 30. But I definitely want to talk about XPEV, NEO, and Lee in a future video probably later on this week. So keep an eye out for that and make sure you're subscribed. Shopify is an interesting one that I want to start building a bigger position on. You can see I only have 0.46 shares, around $631, and we're only up 4%. However, I want to get an average cost of around $1,100 per share or even $1,200 per share. That's probably when I'll start buying a little bit bigger. However, for long term, I think Shopify is a great stock to be owning for a long term portfolio. We also see Cloudflare up 9% on the day. This is another one I want to start establishing a position in. I think it could probably fly up to around $200 per share in the next you know, three to six months. I only have $277, so not a serious position at all, but I want to get my average cost up under $100 if that is possible, if we see a bigger dip. And a lot of people are always, you know, whenever I say, um, you know, a stock's going to go under $100. If they're at $145, for example, they're like, are you out of your mind? That stock's never going to go to $100 per share. But, you know, you shouldn't be surprised, especially if you're, it's typically newer investors who say that kind of thing. Because if you even have a little bit of experience in the stock market, then you know it's very unpredictable in the short term and anything can happen in the short term. We can see, you know, Cloudflare go to $75 per share, which I don't think would happen, but $115 to $100 per share. Definitely, definitely, definitely could happen, especially, you know, it's down, what, 39% in less than 30 days. That's an extreme drop already that probably nobody expected. Now, we also see with Biden's spending plan block, economists lower 2020 growth forecast. So a lot of people are asking, what does that mean? Some economists expect the U.S. economy to grow more slowly next year after the key Democratic lawmaker dealt a seemingly fatal blow to President Joe Biden's $1.7 trillion spending plan, further clouding an outlook that was facing heightening risks from the rapid spread of the Omicron. Um, Goldman Sachs lowered its G GDP forecast for 2022 and did Mark, chief economist of Moody's analyst, and some other people also did not support the ambitious Build Back Better plan proposal which would expand the social safety net and tackle climate change. One shift that economists say could slow growth is the reduction of an enhanced tax credit for sent families monthly payment up $300 per children, which is set to expire in December 31st. So right now, basically anyone who has a child, a child is going to be getting $300 per child and it's expiring. Lawmakers could pass and modify versions of Biden's spending bill next year or decades to extend the credit retroactively. Although negotiations could take weeks, Goldman Sachs researchers wrote in notes to clients. U.S. economic output was expected to slow in the early part of next year from the brisk pace seen at the end of 2021. Even before Omicron emerged as a threat to global growth, and Biden's spending plan was derail, derailed. The spike in COVID-19 infections is beginning to affect some businesses in New York City and elsewhere, leading to even cancellations, restaurants closing, and delay to return to office plans. And those same economists that we're talking about, the Moody's gives Apple top A, triple A credit growth uh, rating on growth promise. 
So this is a good thing for Apple investors, getting a good rating by some top analysts and economists. All right, so now we also see Nike up 6%, by the way. Um, you guys probably already heard, but they beat earnings by a long shot. They were coming in at 0.63, and they came in at 0.83. So that was really good. So we'll finish off with this article here, why Snap stock must hold this key level to avoid free fall. So Snap was mostly trading flat Tuesday morning, blah, blah, blah. On Monday, Chief Business Officer Jeremy sold a total of 51,000 shares, which it was around $2 million of Snapchat. When an insider sells off part of their position, it can be a red flag for investors because it can signal that the person doesn't believe the stock will rise. Although there can be a number of personal reasons an executive decides to uh, sell their shares, like tax loss harvesting, for example. All right, now on December 15th, JPM maintained its overweight rating on Snapchat, but lowered its price target from $73 per share to $65 per share. If Snapchat could rebound up to the $65 mark, it would be a gift to bullish investors but it would represent a 45% increase over the current share price. Although Snap has a lot of work to do before ever reaching that level, there are bullish signs on the chart that a reversal to the upside may be in the cards, which we are looking for. The Snapchat chart on Friday and Monday, Snap tested a support level near $43 per share um, and bounced, which created a bullish double bottom pattern on a daily chart. On Tuesday, the stock attempted to react to the pattern, but the general markets were showing indecision with the SPY trading flat to its open price. All right, Tuesday's uh, price action as of late morning had Snap printing an inside bar, which indicates a period of consolidation. The stock also had lower than average volume, indicating there isn't a high level of interest right now at the present time. Bulls may feel cautious that Snap could be setting into a bear flag pattern with the pull form between December 9th and December 17th, which you can actually check for yourself. If snap falls below its cl uh, closest lower support level on higher than average volume on a lower time frames, traders can feel confident the pattern was recognized. All right, so that's an important last part of that paragraph. You can pause the screen and read these last three paragraphs. Um, if you want, you know, it's more for like day traders and things or even shorter term traders. But you can see if you're bullish what you want to see, if you're bearish what you want to see, you can kind of see some technical analysis there as well. So if you guys enjoy when I talk about stocks, make sure you smash a thumbs up on the video. So I make more of these videos consistently for you guys. And if you guys, if your account doesn't look like this, you know, up $3,200 on the day mark today, go ahead and message me on Instagram. I have a wait list going on for my close friends list where you can see all the times I'm buying, how much I'm selling, what stocks I'm buying. And I even have daily coaching programs too. So if you need daily check-ins and you don't have anyone to talk to about stocks, if your friends or family aren't into stocks and you have no one to bounce ideas off of, that's what I'm here for. Here's my Instagram, by the way. You probably won't see the green ones where it says the close friends list because that's for the close friends list people only. But you will see some of the other highlights if you see success number three, success number four. Feel free to check those out. Those are some student success that they've been having over the few last weeks and few last months and last year and longer. So we made a bunch of money. We have thousands of successful students now. If you want to be a part of that, go ahead and reach out to me on Instagram. Make 2022 your year to be investing in the stock market and cryptocurrency. And if you want to get more involved in cryptocurrency, follow my page, The Daily Cryptocurrency on Instagram. I'm also going to be doing an NFT giveaway tomorrow. So make sure you turn on story notifications if you want to be a part of that share this video with a friend if you think they'll find it helpful which you know they will smash that like button like i already asked for you guys the real ones already smashed it but if you're here to the end of the video comment below don't time the market buy the market peace